Welcome everyone to my channel and YouTube, Sergio Calle Perez, and I invite you to subscribe also click the bell in order to open notification for the coming videos. Today, when, Tuesday, October 21st, 2020. We pray for those who are departing, they rest in peace, pray for those who are ill, and any kind of illness, especially for the COVID-19. The topic today, dealing with what you can control. There are many things in life we can control. Everything from tiny annoyances to tragedies. We can control if our grandmother gets cancer and passes away. We can control if we get cancer. We can control what others think, say, or do. We can control what others think of us. We can control who our loved ones hang out with. We can control who we work with or who is in charge. We can control mother's nature, or today's traffic, or today's political matters. But of course, we can control our reactions to all things we can control. Of course, we can control also what we want wants to believe, what we can think, and we what can do. I'm sure you have heard that sometimes, many, many times. Uh, statements like this and it is true of course but at the moment we are often left wondering how we do react when we are really upset how we do react when we feel like our world has stopped or explode or when somebody announced like doctors for instance said you have such a signs to leave because you will die soon how prepared you are for that moment how well you are preparing for this statement of course, probably not. So we need to enter in connection with the preparation and to control some things that we can control. For instance, our faith. Even for believers, no believers, Catholic, no Catholic, Christian, no Christians, this message probably applies to you because we'll find something and room all your heart and your mind and your soul, the possibility to have a second change in your life to modify what you are thinking, what you're doing, or what you are believing. In the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 12, verse 39, so this is, Jesus said to his disciples, Be sure of this, if the master of the house had known the hour when the thief has come, coming, he would not have let this house be broken into. You also must be prepared, for at the hour you do not expect the Son of Man will come. Of course, this scripture offers an invitation. It can be said that Jesus comes out at an expecting hour in two ways. First, we know that he will return one day in glory to judge the living and the dead. His second coming is real and we should be aware of the fact that it could happen at any time. Of course, probably you don't believe and you are a believer, probably this statement doesn't apply for you. But you need to think a reality. One day we die. So what happened after that? What happened while we you left here? What your legacy for other peoples? Are you prepared to lead something good that other peoples can follow? Or otherwise your behavior was tremendous violence or disorders of life? So we need to think in all of this and also be prepared because this message is helping you and also to be prepared for this moment and when the world and it is will be end and the new order will be established. Ideally, we live each and every day in anticipation of that day at the moment. We must live in such a way that we are always ready for the end. Traditionally, we speak on in Jesus' comings in two ways, many ways, but how about that? If we're talking about that probably the coming of Jesus or the coming of God or the coming of the grace or the coming of the life's second opportunity for you coming and, and the quite real and should be something to which we are continually attentive. His coming by grace requires that we be continually prepared to meet him. We are not prepared. We can be certain that we will miss him. How we do prepare for this coming by grace? We prepare first and 
foremost by fostering a daily habit of interior prayer. An interior habit of prayer means we are, in a sense, always praying. It means that no matter what we do each every day, our minds and our hearts are always turned toward God. It is like breathing. We always do it and do it without even thinking about it. Prayer must become just as much of habit as breathing. It must be central to who we are and who and how we live. Pilgrims of Charity is committed to do so. It's trying to hire people with expertise to help us to prepare well, to give us the second chance in our lives and how we can control those events in our lives we can control. But without your help, we can do nothing. But with your financial support, plus your times and talents that donate to us will help us to provide this quality of service to all people, but also to extend in other areas, and also that all resources can be bigger and bigger to attain people's needs. You can make the difference today. Make the donation. Go to our website, pilgrimsofcharity.com, and see how we can donate. We expect you. Please donate now before it's too late. Do this great difference because there are people who need a bright future. I'm praying for you. Pray for me. May God bless you.